Hey, this is week number two, and why does church matter? And we said last week there's three reasons why we're talking about this subject. Why is it important that we talk about why church is essential? First reason for this series, because many of us who come most Sundays, we've never really thought about why we come. We just always have. But if you don't understand clearly why it matters, if you're not really convinced that it does matter, it wouldn't take much for you to get out of the church habit, and you, you'd no longer be a part of us. So we, we want everybody to understand why, and if you understand the why, it's likely then you'll be committed, and not just anything and everything will uh, knock you out of the habit. Second reason for this series uh, is because many of our children and our grandchildren are not convinced that church matters. And uh, we talked about statistics last week, but I just want you to know, more and more, as each generation comes, they are less and less convinced that church matters. So, they are voting with their feet, so parents, grandparents, that means we better learn why church matters, so we can teach and train and explain our children and our grandchildren, we, we need to tell them why church matters and explain to them from the, the Bible, God's Word, because they are no longer buying we go just because that's what we do. That, that's not working any longer, and they're voting with their feet. Third reason for this series, I'm convinced life is getting faster and faster and faster, even in northern Michigan. We might be uh, 5, 10, 15 years behind the major cities, but the pace of life is increasing, which means more and more of us are feeling overwhelmed and overscheduled and exhausted. And I won't ask you if that's how you're feeling this morning, because I suspect many of you say, yeah, that put me in there. Uh, but if you don't understand clearly why church is essential, then you're going to be tempted as you get more scheduled and more overwhelmed and more exhausted. You will be tempted to sleep in on that's a, that's a day off. Take a break from the church habit because the busyness of life is wearing you down. Where can I find some margin? Oh yeah, I think I found it. Uh, I'm not going to connect. I'm not going to serve. I'm not going to be a part of church any longer. And I'm just telling you, more and more and more people not just here in Walloon, all over the U.S., people are making that choice. I'm just overwhelmed. I'm, I'm going to stay home. So, that's why. Last week, first answer, why does church matter? That, that's why we're doing this series. Uh, last week, we said church matters uh, because King Jesus tells us in his book, my plan to reach and change and save the world today it's the local church. It's, it's the church age, y'all. Today, the church is the hope of the world. Literally, I, I would argue the hope of northern Michigan is the local church. And as we do our job and reach out, it, it's God's plan to use us to reach and change the people around us, the people who are our friends, our family, the people we work with, go to school with. That's God's plan reach and change the world. This morning we're going to look at answer number two. Why does church matter? You ready? Why does it matter that, that we go to church and are plugged in? Church matters because the church is the bride of Christ. It's the bride of Jesus Christ. Uh, think of it, you've got the king, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. His name is Jesus Christ. God's word says the queen is his bride, his wife, if you will, is the local church. Did you know that? It's huge, and we're going to look at that this morning. Stand with me if you're able. We're going to be in the fifth chapter of Paul's letter to the local church at Ephesus. What was that? It was written to the local church meeting in the city of Ephesus, chapter 5. Slide down on your phone or in your Bible to verse 25. We'll read down through verse 32. You ready? This is God's Word. Let's read out loud together. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church 
and gave himself up for her. Holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. And to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. Let's pray. Lord, we, uh, we need you this morning as we talk about why your church matters. So, w- would you meet us today in your church? Teach us about your Son, Jesus Christ, and His bride, the church. Uh, would you show us why that makes a difference, how that should matter to us, why that's essential? Lord, the truth is, more and more people who say they love your son Jesus, who say they're followers of your son Jesus, are choosing not to plug in and connect with your church. Lord, I'm asking that you might show us today why that's dangerous. Would you show us this morning, Lord, why that's not in alignment with your book? I want to pause now because I know some of the family here today are hurting. Some are exhausted, as we just talked about. Some are in pain. Some are in turmoil right now, Lord. Some are uh, facing relationship struggles and battles. Lord, uh, we're glad that we can be here together as family. So first of all, would you help us to humble ourselves so we can admit and tell other people who can love and encourage and, and pray for us. So help us to to own up to where we're at right now. And if we're not doing well, Lord, help us to seek one another this morning. And Lord, others of us, would you help us to notice? And when people humble themselves and share, Lord, help us to care. Help us to pray and love and support one another today in your family here. And finally, Lord, I want to pray for the folks who are watching online. Many of them... Right now, I know, are right in the middle of all sorts of chaos and struggle and pain. And Lord, for everybody watching online, I I pray that your grace and your mercy might rain down upon them. And Lord, I pray that they might, in due time, after they get well, Lord, maybe after uh, they feel comfortable, connect with a local church. Um, Lord, help them to realize they need one another face-to-face in person as well. Like we do every Sunday, Lord, we need your Holy Spirit to come and be welcome today. Lord, nothing is going to happen that's going to matter or make a difference unless your Spirit is here and welcome today in your church. So corporately, come Holy Spirit. We're, we're, uh, We're in great need of you. Take charge in your church today. Take charge of these weak lips Lord, help us to hear clearly from you. Might Jesus Christ be lifted high today in your church. And the church family at Walloon Lake said with one united voice, you can be seated. Imagine with me for the next few moments, okay? So I want you to track the beloved king of the most powerful nation on planet Earth announces to all of the citizens in the land, from this day forward, I'm going on a long journey. And from now on, my bride, the queen, is the chief of staff. She's my ambassador. She is my spokesperson. And if you want to get things accomplished today in my kingdom, while I'm gone, and it's going to be a long time, Till I'm back, 
My edict is you do business through my bride. You come and see her, and it's through her that you're going to accomplish my business. Do it through my bride, my wife, the queen. And all throughout the land, as the plan reaches everybody all around this powerful nation, people aren't happy with this news. They aren't happy because they really love the king. And they don't want him to go away. They're not happy with this order because many of them protest, we don't really like the queen. We we don't really like her very much. She's not as smart. She's not as gifted. She's not as nice as you are, dear king. We, We don't care for the queen. We're sorry, but that's the truth. She works hard. She gives it everything she has, but she messes up sometimes. That queen, that wife, that bride of yours, sometimes she's just mean and ornery, and we don't like working with your wife. So over time, track with me, many of the citizens uh, who were under the king's kingdom refused to work with the king's wife. Um, I don't want to meet with the queen. I, I don't want to do business with the queen. And many of them just flat out refuse to cooperate with the queen. They even start a whispering campaign. Can, can we come up with another plan? The king's gone now. We don't like her. We don't like this plan. We don't want to work with her. Let's see if we can come up with another plan because we don't really care For the queen. Some of you are saying, that's kind of a strange story, Pastor Jeff. And and others of you are saying, I think I know where you're going with this. Can, Can I just say, this is no imaginary story. This is not a fairy tale. This is exactly what many Christians are doing quite clearly today. I love you, Jesus. You're my king. You're my savior. I love the king. I love to worship Jesus Christ. I just don't like the king's bride, the local church. And many people are saying that that's just where I'm at. I I don't care for the local church. It just doesn't fit me. I know, king, you've ordered me to connect with your bride because your bride is your plan to accomplish your bidding today. But you know, sometimes the local church is hard to get along with. You know, and sometimes the local church, the bride, messes up. And sometimes the local church is even mean and ornery. I know that's hard to believe, but it's true, isn't it? Some of you could raise your hand, oh yeah, I've had mean and ornery experiences with with the bride, the local church. So, many today are saying, King Jesus, I don't think I'm going to follow your plan. I know that's what you've ordered, but I'm not going to join. I refuse to be a part of your church. I'm going to make up my own church. And you know some people, you know, they've started Lone Ranger Church, you know. It's me and Tonto, and, and, and I got my horse, and I'm just going to do my own thing. Or, you know, I sip coffee and we talk religious things. That's my church. Or, or I go out in the woods and I just me, me in, in the trees, and that's where I have my church. Again, what are they saying? <laughs> Jesus, I, I know what you've planned, I know what you've ordered, and I love you, and I worship you, I just refuse to do it your way. I'm not going to connect with your church. Now, just think about it. I, I could, you know, Tim and Marie, you know, Tim, I really like you. You're a great guy. I want to be your friend. I want to hang around you all the time. I just don't like your wife. That's not true. She's one of the nicest people I know. That's why I picked her, okay? Because it's just not true. But if someone really felt that way, Tim, and said, you know, I really love you, I want to be your best friend, I want to hang out with you all the time, but I want nothing to do your, with your wife, well, again, I'm just telling you, you're going to say, sorry, <laughs> that's not going to work. Because we're one. 
The Lord put a, and if you don't like her, you don't like me. And if you don't like her, I don't like you. Do you understand? You know, that's just blunt. So I'm just telling you, think about it, and you wouldn't even allow that to go on in your own house with people trying to connect with you, but, but I don't like your bride. I don't want nothing to do with your bride. Just, just for free. For most of us, Tim, it's the opposite. You know, I like your bride. I don't really care for you, but, but it, doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't fit with the analogy here, so here we go. Okay, so uh, how should the king respond with citizens who reject his plan? Think about it. You, you got the king of kings, lord of lords, creator of the cosmos, savior of all mankind. This is what I want you to do. This is my plan for today. And now you got lots of folks saying, I don't, I don't like your plan, Jesus. No, thank you. So how does Jesus respond? Okay, And I believe he responds by writing to us in his book. And remind us why this is his plan. Why the Savior, the Lord, the King chose to do it his way. Okay, uh, Here we go. Ephesians 5, verse 25. Let's dig in. Okay, It says this. Husbands, love your wives. And I bet some of you while we're reading saying, I didn't know we were in a marriage series, Pastor Jeff. You know, Here we go. We're talking about husbands and wives. But I want you to know, the central application here isn't husbands and wives. The major message here has to do with Jesus and his church. And the application is husbands and wives in marriage. So sometimes we miss that. He's actually talking about Jesus who willingly sacrificed his life on the cross for who? For who did he sacrifice? Does it say? Verse 25. Who did he shed his blood for? The who? It's the church. He's talking about the church here. Jesus willingly took our place on the cross, shed his blood for the church, plural. Not just individuals, for the church body, for the family, he says. Those of us who gather as family, we gather to reach and serve, and love, and change the world, plural, corporately, together. Lone Ranger Church was never a part of God's plan. Uh, all by myself, out in the woods, that's never got part of God's plan. Just, just schmoozing with some coffee and talking, that's a good thing if you're talking about good, right, pure things. That's not church. We gather together corporately to worship Jesus, the body, and we, the bride, gather together so that we can reach out corporately together and see northern Michigan changed for Jesus Christ. You understand? That's the purpose of the local church, and that's the main point of this passage. You're not sure you believe that? Slide down to verse 32. I, I just want to remind you. He says, in case you didn't get it, this is a profound mystery. I get it. This is hard to understand, but he just says it flat out, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. This whole section, first and foremost, is talking about Jesus Christ and his bride, the local church. Okay? He's using this relationship between husband and wife to illustrate the relationship between Jesus and and his church. I hope that's tracking with you, okay? He, he's using the illustration of husbands and wives and marriage to explain the relationship between the bride, the church, and the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. Here's how John Stott says it. Let me, let me let somebody else a little smarter than me say it. What stands out here is the sacrificial steadfastness of the heavenly bridegroom's covenant, his love for his bride, the church. Now, now here's, here's the tension. You ready? The tension is, in our culture today, we, we, like, we like to be individuals, right? We like to do it myself. And I can do it, and I will pray, and I will walk with Christ, 
And, and I will say yes to Jesus, and I will do it because I can. And the emphasis 2020, our culture, it's all about individuals. I, I, I can do it. I trusted Christ. I do my daily devotions. I worship well. I got my Spotify. I got my iTunes. I sing to Jesus. I'm connected to Jesus daily. I'm doing just fine. Thank you very much. And that's just where we're at. Now here, here's the problem with that. This is a team sport. <laughs> We're called, as the church, godly people called together by Jesus and His Spirit to new life and salvation, and He's going to use the church and the Word of God. That's why every Sunday we open up God's Word, because that's what brings cleansing. That's what brings conviction. Oh yeah, I'm out of alignment. i got to get back in alignment. We gather together, and it's God's Word that washes and cleanses and purifies. You understand? That's what he's talking about here. Ephesians chapter 5. And he said, the bride, plural, the church, we're called to connect and together the body accomplishes his plan. Okay. Some of you would say, but the church is messy. How many can I get it? Amen. The church is imperfect. The, the church is made up of sinners just like me, and, and they, don't, they don't always do it God's way. And sometimes they're hard to get along with. Can I get an amen there? Yeah. We, we, I get it. The truth is it's easier just to do it alone, right? Well, I'm just going to do it. I, I don't need the church. I'm just going to be by myself. I'm going to do it my way. How many of you, question, would say, is the easy way usually the right way to do something? In your experience, is the easy way in God's plan very often the right way? And, and I would argue almost never. <laughs> you know, oh, I just want to do it the easy way. We're not called most of the time to do it the easy way. We're called to do it the right way which oftentimes is harder and more difficult and takes longer and requires more patience and thought and prayer. It's just true. So, let's go back to Ephesians 5. Okay? The, the illustration that we can grab a hold of here, we can understand better, it has to do with marriage, right? And here would be my advice. If you're looking to do it the easy way, stay single. Is that not true? If you want to just do, don't get married. Why? Because marriage, I get an amen here, requires compromise and patience and seeking forgiveness and giving forgiveness and understanding and learning love languages and learning to compromise with one another. If you want to do it the easy way, stay single. I promise you, way easier. Because the only one you got to please is me, okay? okay? A good, healthy marriage requires you don't get your way all the time. I'm here to serve you. I'm here to look out for your needs and your interests first and foremost. That's at core what marriage is. Okay. There's a book that I require last 10 years, every couple that I marry to... Uh, to read. It's called Sacred Marriage. Carly's going to get it up there. It's by Gary. It's a great book. It really is. Uh, but I really like the subtitle, and this is really the theme of the entire book. Here's, here's the question. What if God designed marriage to make us holy more than to make us happy? What if the purpose of marriage isn't to make us happy, but the real underlying purpose of marriage is to make us holy. And he spends the rest of the book laying out the case. That's exactly the case. You, you don't get married to be happy. You get married because God uses the context of marriage to make us more and more like Jesus. Because if you want a happy, healthy marriage, it's not about me. And it's a purifying, it, it, it's a maturing thing. Okay. Now, I would ask the same question about church. 
What if God designed church to make us holy more than to make us happy? Think about it. What if, what if the purpose of church isn't so much, this is going to be easy. This is going to be fun and skippy all the time. What if the purpose of church is actually to make us grow up and not get our way all the time? And, and learn patience and learn forgiveness and learn to get along with people who aren't much like me, and yet I'm going to do that in the context of the church family. What if God's plan today for church is not to make us happy, but to grow us up and make us holy and more and more like Jesus Christ? I just want to keep going a bit on that marriage thing because more and more, 2020, I don't know if you know this, but more and more people today in our culture refuse to commit to getting married. More and more people are saying, well, well, I'll live with you, uh, we'll hang out, we'll do married stuff, and you know what I mean by that, but I'm not willing to make promises and vows to you, okay? So, so uh, I'll, I'll hang with you until hanging doesn't feel that great, and then I'll move on and you can move on. Did you know a majority of our young people are choosing that today? It's gone over 50, most, and, and we, we say, oh, the divorce statistics are getting better. You know why they're getting better? Because most of our kids, they're not even getting married. So when they break up, it doesn't show up. So uh, anyway, that's a little side. But my point here is this. If that's the reality in our culture today, it shouldn't surprise us that more and more people say, you know, I like you, Jesus. I, I even said yes, and, and, and I believed, and I received, and I think you're awesome, Jesus, but I'm not willing to commit to your bride. I, I'm not willing to jump into that motley crew of sinners and hypocrites. You, you think I want anything to do with them? No, thank you. Um, I think I'll just kind of date your bride and kind of stay my distance. I love you, Jesus, but I don't care for your bride. Thanks, but no thanks. And more and more people are in that mindset today than ever before. But it shouldn't surprise us. That's the mindset regarding marriage. That's the mindset regarding the church. King Jesus says clearly, catch this, go back to Ephesians 5. I died and sacrificed everything on the cross for my bride, the church. I bore the sin of my bride. Rejecting God's plan and his bride, track with me, is at core rejecting the king. You, you reject his plan and say, okay, I, I love you, I serve you, I worship you, but you say, I'm not willing to do it your way, I don't like your bride, no thanks. You're not just making a choice. You're rejecting the King, the Savior, the Lord, the Ruler. Okay. I want to switch pictures with you because I want to show you something. Last book of the new section of uh, God's Word. This is, this is pretty cool. Turn uh, on your phone or in your Bible, Revelation 19. Okay? Because... There's this wrestling match we got going on, Satan, sin, old world system, on my old sinful, scrappy nature. And I'm just telling you, there's a tension, there's a pull, okay? Prone to wander is how uh, the hymn writer said it. Um, Revelation 19, this is like just before the Battle of Armageddon. This is like just before Revelation 19. Uh, 20, and everything is made new, new heaven, new earth, chapters 21 and 22, okay? So now you understand the context, but I just want to show you something in chapter 19, beginning with verse 6. It says, uh, John writing, Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters, like loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. One of the few times the word hallelujah is used. Verse 7. 
let us rejoice and be glad and give Him glory. Who's getting the glory? For the wedding of the Lamb has come. The Lamb is getting married. And, and His bride has made himself, made herself, excuse me, ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. Then the angel said to me, write this, get it down. Blessed are those who are invited to this wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, these are the words of the true God, true words of God. Anyway, a uh, couple questions. The Lamb here is also the bridegroom, and his name, what's the bridegroom's name? Just want to get it clear here. What's the bridegroom's name here? Jesus Christ. And who's the bride that's getting married to Jesus Christ? And your answer would be? 2 Corinthians 11.2, I'm jealous for you, Paul writes to the local church, with a godly jealousy. I promise you to one husband to Christ, so that I might present you as a pure virgin to him. If you slide over uh, another couple chapters, Revelation 21.9, the church, the bride of Jesus Christ, the bride, the wife of the Lamb. Okay? So, so this is that, that final ceremony, that, that, that final time when the church and Jesus Christ come together. And note how the church is dressed. Note how the church will be dressed. Just like a bride, it says fine linen, that, that's the best that you have to offer, bright, clean, and, and then it says, this is interesting, uh, the clothes, the fine linen, the bright, the clean clothes are the righteous acts of God's holy people. The righteous acts of God's holy people. Slow down, Pastor Jeff, because I'm pretty sure that Ephesians has something to say about that, right? Some of you are thinking, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's by grace we are saved, not by works, so that nobody can boast, Ephesians 2, 6, and 7. And I would say exactly right. That's how you come to faith in Christ, by faith alone. The grace of Jesus Christ saves us from the inside out. But you've got to keep reading. Ephesians 2. In verse 10, for we, the church, are God's workmanship. After you've said, yes, I believe, I receive by grace alone, by faith alone, then we're called, we are the church, we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So, please understand, you come to faith in Christ by faith alone, grace alone, but we're called to do good works through the power of Jesus alive and living in us and His Spirit flowing through us. We're called to do good works. So the bride of Christ, the local church, we're called to get busy and that, go back to the text, verse 8, that's what we wear when we as the church get married to the bridegroom, Jesus Christ. So here's my question. How, how are we doing with our clothing this morning? How are we dressed this morning? Are, are we dressed? Are, are we ready? I hear many of you say, boy, the Lord could come back anytime. Are, are you dressed for this event? Are, are, you, are you dressing? Your, are you regularly seeing righteous acts done in the power of the Spirit? Are you dressed to get married to the king right now? Because if you're not dressed, this is not, this is a, whoa, no, not yet. Are, are you clean and bright? Or is the truth, yeah, I'm a part of the bride, I'm a part of the local church, but I'm spending a good deal of my time rolling around in the mud and the manure of this world. You, you, you see the disconnect? Oh yeah, Jesus is coming back. It's going to be soon. Yeah, well, you better get dressed and dressed to be ready for the bridegroom to come back. Because this event is coming. Are you ready? 
Are, are you daily connecting with Jesus Christ and where there's sin, doing the U-turn, confessing, getting right and clean and pure and filled with Jesus, allowing Him to take charge so you can do righteous acts and get dressed and be ready for the bridegroom to return. I, w- I would argue a lot of us, were, I'm just living, you know. Yeah, I didn't mean to watch this show. I, I didn't mean to say that. I didn't mean to express this attitude, th- this ugliness. I- I'm just saying we need to get ready because this is the day. Track with me, Revelation 19, 6 to 9. This is the day that all of us who belong to Jesus, that we walk down the aisle and are united with the bridegroom, Jesus Christ, and we will be connected with Jesus Christ, the bridegroom, new heaven, new earth, without end. This is, this, this is, this is what we look forward to. 